All right, guys, so a bit of a different style of video to what I normally do, um, but I just wanted to share a little project that I'm doing with you here at the moment. Um, last couple of days, I haven't been training, so that's why there's been a little lack of footage. One, I've been a little bit ill, but two, I've also been absolutely knackered because I've been doing this. You'll be surprised how hard gardening is. My back and legs are pumped. <laughs> I'll tell you that for nothing. So anyway, guys, what I've been doing the last... Uh, couple of days off from yesterday onwards um i've been planting an orchard in my garden I, i'm very lucky i have a large garden it's my little eden a big eden in this case um but what i've been doing is i have um been adapting some of the land um by our greenhouse very lucky to have one of them um we've been, i've been basically adapting it into to create an orchard um it's something that i've always been interested in something i've always wanted i love fruit um so getting freshly grown fruit in your own garden for free for years and years to come well no one can really argue with that can they um, but basically what i did yesterday is i planted 23 trees um, and this is kind of what they look like at the moment. So you can see the kind of very young saplings. They almost look like sticks. You, you, you know, you wouldn't necessarily be able to identify what um, trees they are. Um, but that, luckily, they come with their, their labels. That's going to be the expanse of the orchard there, going from between these paths and that greenhouse. Now, as I say, what I've done so far is I've planted 23 um, saplings. Um, managed to do that all yesterday, and I have another nine left to plant. Oh, the type of trees that I have are um, a variety of different apple uh, breeds, including uh, gala apples and uh, apple ligols. Um, I have a variety of plums, plum, plum mirabelle is the, the main breed that I have, but I have a couple of other varieties in there also. And I've also got pears, including brilliant pears, and again, another couple of different breeds. Um, but they're the primary ones that I've got. Um, originally, I was hoping to get hold of some fantasy nectarine also. Um, that would have been amazing and also alongside a variety of uh, black cherries as also uh, uh, that was the original intention but because it's end of season unfortunately um they were basically out of stock they wouldn't be able to uh fulfill the order so in compensation for that um i actually got 10 extra trees than what i originally ordered so i originally ordered 24 um uh, and hence why i stopped at 23 because i when i realized i had extra trees i was like Ah, kind of breaks you because at that point I'd already done about seven and a half, eight hours of digging straight and planting and stuff like this. So as you can imagine, I was tired. When I felt like I had another 10 left, I was like, no, nah, I can't do that. I can't do that. <laughs> So I prepared the trees uh, to leave them overnight uh, in a way that they'll stay healthy and ready um, to be planted, uh, as I say, today, which is what I'm, I'm starting to do. And I'm going to show you how I do that, how I dig the holes um, and sort of the little things that you need to do to make um, these trees stand as good a chance as possible of coming up as healthy and as big and as productive as they can be. Um, but this is how I left the remaining trees yesterday. So you just get a bucket, fill it with water, uh, you separate all the roots, um, and if I show you what they look like, there you go. Okay, so you separate the roots, you keep them soaked in water, and that does a pretty good, good job of keeping them nice and well overnight uh, to give you a break to be able to come back with renewed energy and vigor. So planting trees is relatively simple overall. Okay, it's pretty, you know, uh, uh, explanatory, self-explanatory. You dig the hole, you put the tree in, and then you put the soil back on top. Oh, hang on, my other dog's just come to say hello. <laughs> He's come to visit. Um, anyway, so that is relatively simple overall, but there are a few techniques that you can use to make it easier on yourself. Can you imagine, especially doing a volume like this? So I'll try and talk you through a few tricks of the trade that I've picked up over whilst I'm doing this. As I say, as I was getting more and more tired, I started to use my brain rather than my broad. Prior preparation prevents uh, poor performance. <laughs> um, the first thing is to pick a plot of land uh, that is as much suit, has, is as suitable as possible for planting the trees. Uh, within that land then you also then pick the best parts for those trees to be planted. So where we have here as you can see there is sun and the sun rises from over there and sets behind me. So there is uh, sun here pretty much throughout the entirety of the day. Uh, it's only in the early morning where it's a bit of shade. Um, so that's the first important thing. Make sure that you 
you've got a lot of exposure to sun. You also want to make sure that there's plenty of rainfall, that it's not intercepted. So up and above here, we have a big, big tree in our neighbor's garden, uh, which doesn't span over too far towards us. Packed a wee bit on some of the areas where I can plant the trees. Obviously the tree itself above us uh, up there, provide shade which obviously as I say we don't really want but it intercepts the rainfall also and so towards the fence here I've uh, not put any trees I've kept them from around about here onwards rather than as I say starting over there and as you can see the soil over here is far drier than where I've been digging and you can tell that when you dig you can tell whether it's getting a lot of rainfall or not because the soil will be very dry if it is very dry don't plant there guys um, you want to keep it uh, wet it also makes it easier to dig all right guys so when you know where you're going to put your hole, and you might want to plant your trees in a particular pattern, you might want straight lines, or you might want it a little bit like I've tried to do it, more organic, higgledy-piggledy sort of thing, almost like a checkered board. It's kind of what I'm going for. But then after you know where you need to dig, you then need to dig, okay? Now to do that, what you want, you want to do is first of all, learn to use your body weight as I say. So, oh, got an insect in my mouth. <laughs> so what you want to do is put the uh, spade uh, where you want the border of the hole to be and you want to be pretty much digging out a kind of small rectangle in essence um, to be able to prop, put the, uh, the trees in. The easiest way to do it, once you've lined it up, put your foot on it, get a little bit of a hold. This is on a hill so it's a little bit awkward for me because it, obviously gravity is starting to pull me backwards but once I'm sort of steady I'll put my other foot on this spade and then push down with my legs. And that should get the spade into the soil. There we go, as so. So you can see that took very little effort. I'm using my legs and the power of my legs and my body weight to get the spade in. It's very hard. Normally what you would do if you could, I don't have a strimmer on me, um, you would cut the grass beforehand because the grass makes it a lot harder to dig the hole. That's our first sort of indent into the soil. What we want to do is we want to turn the spade around and create a rectangular pattern with the cuts in essence. Then what we do is we'll just raise the soil, the top soil off the top, and we'll use that then as a basis to then start digging into and making the hole deeper. So let's start on, let's continue with those uh, extra free cuts essentially that I'm making with the spade. Try the soil just a little bit after each one to loosen it up. It is a lot easier to dig these holes if you've just had a, a little bit of rainfall also. There we go. Then what we do is we raise it up, which I'll show you on a different angle. So once you've dug it up, you can raise it up like that. Now that is a bit deep. You don't really want it as deep as that because it makes the next, the last bit where you put the soil back in a little bit more difficult. But because I'm doing such large volume, I want to dig these holes as quickly as I can. And I don't mind taking a bit of extra time just crumbling that with my hands. And because it will be filled, it doesn't really matter if it's perfect or not. It's just creating enough space to put the, uh, the sapling in. So you can see the hole uh, at the moment. If I put the spade in for reference for depth, it's roughly a third, maybe approaching the half, about 40, 30 to 40% of the spade in depth. You want to get the whole, a spade, one spade length in depth. So I should be able to put this spade all the way in and it basically um, should um, kind of be fully encompassed like that, like I did with the other one. Okay, so you see that? It's a spade in depth. To help you do that, you can loosen the soil first with a fork. Okay, the soil will be somewhat compact underneath by using the fork in the same way that you use a spade or similar manner that you use a spade, you can loosen the soil up a wee bit and make it easier to dig out with the spade. So you put it in, in the hole and don't push down with your arms. Again, just use your foot, nice and gentle and then just pry up the soil. 
And as you can see, this that one little bit has already loosened up a lot of soil there. Uh, makes it more crumbly, which is better for when you put the soil back into the hole around the, the roots of the uh, sapling also. So I'll do that a few times, loosen it up fully. The soil is fully loosened now. It won't take much effort to take the spade and dig that out. Now, once I take that little bit out, it might be that to get to full depth, I then have to loosen the soil underneath what I've just lo loosened. So basically you rinse and repeat. You loosen, you use a spade, get it out, check the depth. If the depth is fine, stop. If it's not, continue to go deeper. If you need to, use the fork to loosen it again, then use spade. So uh, fork, spade, fork, spade, until you get to the right depth. Now, our hole is dug and we've got a good sweat on. <laughs> so what we want to do now, normally what I would do is I would dig multiple holes um, before then start putting the saplings in. But for the purposes of showing you guys what to do, I'm going to put the sapling in straight into there and show you what to do before then I just kind of get on with my day. So now the hole is dug as I say, we pick one of our saplings. Doesn't really matter which one, obviously you can put them in a certain order and certain arrangement according to what you want to do. Not a problem. I'm putting it in random because I say I want a kind of organic look to the garden. You then get the roots nice and deep. Okay, and that's kind of roughly where we want this tree to go. Let's see what we've picked up. We've picked up an apple ligel. Okay, so what we'll do then is we'll start putting in the soil into this hole. So take your soil, which you know, hopefully you've, as I say, you've used the fork on, so it's a, it's fairly crumbly. If you've got good quality soil, it'll be crumbly anyway. It's really nice, but it also depends on how much water is in the soil. And what you do is you want to, when you're placing the soil around the roots, you want to make it into a fine crumble. Okay, um, you don't want, you know, to put a big lump of soil like that because you want the soil to surround the roots so that all the water and the nutrients within the soil can get to the roots of the tree with as little as much ease as possible so basically you continue doing this if you want around the edges you can put the big lumps of soil okay just to add almost like a kind of structural support around it's almost like adding scaffolding around the hole okay that's fine but around the roots you want to crumble it all right guys so that is kind of how it looks like once you put all the soil back in uh, some of that soil has come from this topsoil what i do with that i literally just use the force of my hand i just rip it off and i crumble it back on over the top as you go towards the top, it doesn't matter if the soil is as crumbled or not. Once the roots are covered, you can put slightly bigger, you know, amounts of soil in there. But there we go. That's done and dusted. That is pretty much done and dusted now. You can see I've pretty much got a nice, good orchard coming on already. Uh, these particular trees are dwarf columnar trees, so they have a very high yield um, and they don't get particularly tall, maybe about five, six feet, something like that. Um, but they do produce fruit, fruit within the first year. So next year in the spring sort of time, we'll start hopefully starting to see some fruit starting to develop. Um, and uh, obviously the flowers also, apple trees tend to have a nice white blossom. For example, pear trees have a white flower typically also. So obviously there are certain varieties here, so there might be some degree of variation there. Um, so anyway, I am really stoked. Maybe in a year's time, I'll show you uh, how the orchard is growing. Keep up to date with you on how things are progressing. I'm hoping all the trees will take, you know, it is gardening somewhat um, uh, a roll of the dice. You know, not all the trees may fully take to the soil. That would be a shame if that's happening. But you know, at the same time, it's a reality. So not maybe not all of these will take, but a good chunk of them will, and we'll have a really pretty orchard by the end. Um, anyway, guys, that's enough from me now. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you've got any comments and criticisms or anything like that, please put them in the comments below. Um, I am not, by any means, an, an avid gardener, but it's something that I'm starting to take up. Um, and so I'm starting to enjoy and as I say as I'm learning and progressing my skills in the garden Maybe it's something I'd like to share with you guys um, But if you've got any advice for me um, if I'm doing something wrong or if there's something I can do better or something I can make it easier Then please tell me as I say I'm on a learning experience here. Last one guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye